Now, yesterday we have, uh, for today's class, I'm not going to write anything because I solely depend on my uh, my slide. Uh, beginning from next for, from next week, uh, what this is what I'm going to do, okay? I will uh, prepare a short video for every subchapter that you have, okay? So that it will be easier for you to watch the video, okay? Hopefully, I can set the video within uh, 5 minutes to 20 minutes each and I will upload the video in my YouTube channel so that it will be easy for you to access that video whenever you need to, to watch or rewatch the video, you can uh, go to my uh, YouTube channel. And I really hope by next week, okay, for the night classes, okay, I will not going to do it as synchronized, okay? So I will just let you uh, watch the videos that I have prepared and then for the class during the day, that should be the synchronized class that will be today's uh, timetable. So I'm going to uh, do the discussion part, okay? Whenever you have any problem based on the video uh, presentation, if you have any problem or if you have any questions, we can discuss during the class as what we have now from 1.30 to 3.30, okay? So the same goes to the tutorial questions, okay? Even though we have project for your chapter one, I think uh, we still need to discuss all the, at least some part uh, of your tutorial one so that you you be very clear with the materials part for chapter one, okay? And I really hope by next week I can, you know, prepare all the videos, all the necessary videos, especially for chapter one, okay? And for today's, we are going to start with the 1.3, okay? 1.3. Now, what we have learned uh, yesterday uh, was we are dealing with data. And then your data can be from uh, uh, your own source where you, you collect your data on your own. And when you collect your data on your own, usually it will be from your survey. And that survey could be a Google form that you have prepared and then you share that Google form with your friends and you ask your friend to fill in for you. Or it could be from an experiment that you did, okay? And that experiment uh, will purposely uh, fulfill your intention of doing the experiment, okay? For example, what we have uh, discussed yesterday is the experiment of skewer, okay? We have... Uh, several sets of skewers that we bought from a, a shop and then what we do, we divide into three groups of students and these three groups of students measure the length of that skewer. So these are all what we call the primary data. And then uh, we also look at uh, uh, secondary, secondary data where we have the, the second hand data from the first party collected the data. So means that you don't have any access to the data in such a way that you can uh, manipulate the data, you can change the data. Uh, what you can do is just use the data. Okay, the same goes to primary data. It's actually you don't manipulate in terms of you. You change the data uh, of that particular respondent. So, so there will be the difference between uh, primary data and secondary data. Now, based on that particular discussion, we come up with different uh, what we call concept and terms that we will going to use it repetitively in your uh, in your course EQT two seven one. That include the first is variable. Now these particular terms variable will be repeatedly every chapter chapter one chapter two chapter three chapter four chapter five. We are going to refer to this particular variable. Because knowing what variable that you are dealing with will help you out in terms of what analysis that you are going to use. Okay? Now, what is variable? Can someone tell me what is variable? In your own simple way, what is variable? Can, can someone uh, please share your thought? Subject of interest. Yes, yeah, subject of interest any subject of interest that you wish to, to investigate more, that will be your variable. And usually, 
uh, we are going to denote that variable using capital X, big X. Okay, that X refers to variable. And that uh, from that variable, we measure uh, based on the observation that we have. For example, the skewers, uh, what we call the skewers, um, uh, what the point here? Okay, we are talking about the skewer. Okay, uh, we are we are we are measuring the length. Okay, and we know that from the length itself, when we measure, there will be the second concept appeared, that is variability. Okay, so there will be um, differences in terms of measurements that you measured from each of the observation that you have in hand. So that is what we call uh, variability, successive differences values that you have from one observation to other observation. That is variability. What is the, the what is the thing about variability that important to statistic? Can someone tell me? Or if simple way I can ask, if you don't have any variability, variability in your data, do you need statistic? Yes or no? No. Class? Yes. Uh, if you have variability, do you need statistic to help you out or do you, you don't have, you don't need statistic? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Whenever there are variability in your data set, that's when statistic comes in. If let's say your data, every single observation here, all are 13. Okay. Group A obtain all 40 observations, all 13. The same goes to group B, 13. Perfect 13 cm skewer. Then there will be no variability exists in your data set. Then no way you can discuss about you know, you don't have to discuss anything about it because you have perfect operation. Okay, so everything is okay. So no need to do any correction. No need to look what happened to your operations so that everything will be, you know, as as, as good as what you expected. Now, go back to this particular data summary and presentation. Okay, now look at this particular uh, uh, primary data and secondary data. So we have sample survey, we have skewer, you, you have what we call government report. Now, what are the variables involved in this data? I know if we are talking about skewers, then specifically we know we are talking about the length of skewer. What about this particular sample survey? What are the variables involved inside the data? What about this one? What are the variables involved? Can you just look at this particular survey in specific? Uh, you can see here the equation is about the age of the respondent. So you have um, 17 and less, 18 to 25, 26 to 35, until the, the oldest will be above 76 years old. Now, this is the first question. The second question, gender, male, female, or others. I thought only male and female. Somehow, there are others option. Okay, never mind. And the role could be... Um, Specific role for this particular survey, uh, just assume uh, 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 this survey is specific for 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 a group of respondents that they specifically choose. So the role could be uh, clerical, sales, design, uh, I cannot really see actually, executive, marketing and others. So it could be uh, somewhat like occupation or the role of this particular respondent in an organization maybe. So what are the variables involved in this particular sample survey? Okay, and what about this one, government report? We have food and services, we have food and non-alcohol beverages, we have clothing and footwear, we have housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels, and until you have, the last is the miscellaneous good and services. And you have the column for weight. And then you have the column for years, 2010, 2011, 2012, and so on and so forth. I just cut uh, this particular data. Okay. Now, what are the variables? Can you guess? Okay. So if you look at one by one of this primary and secondary data, 
you can actually figure out what variable involved. Okay, so for this particular survey, the first variable is what we call age. Okay, uh, how do we know age? Because the question asks about the age. Second, asks about gender. So variable number two is gender. And variable number three is role. So we have X1, age, X2, gender, X3, role. So this is uh, uh, some of the variables involved in a survey form. And for the skewer experiment, the variable is length. The group A measure the length, group B also measure the length, the same goes to group C. And what about the government report or the data set that you have uh, chosen for your project one? For example, for this one, we are talking about good and services. So this is your variable for good and services. So there will be few items under good and services. And you can see there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, until miscellaneous, miscellaneous, good and services, you have all together 11 items under your variable good and services. And if you wish to choose years for variable, which uh, usually is not the case, so just remain the information according to your years in your data set. So you can have only one variable for this particular government. Report. So, do you have any question here, class? Any question? No, huh? I, I assume no. Now, if you look at your textbook on page, um, uh, what we call page 8, okay? So, you have uh, under 1.3 types of variable. So, we have two types of variable, okay? Some books uh, define types of variables differently, but uh, in your case, we would uh, use this two particular distinction. The first is qualitative data, and the second is quantitative data. What is the difference between these two, quantitative and qualitative? Now, looking at the name, quality, quality, quantity, okay? So quality data or qualitative data Okay, the characteristic is first deals with description, means that uh, you are dealing with description of that particular data. Okay, what kind of description? Let us look later. Okay, and this data, qualitative data, can be observed but not measured, means that you can only see, but you don't have to measure to know what is the description of that particular data. And what kind what kind of description that you may have? For example, first color. Okay, you observe in my slide, uh, the color of my table here is orange. Okay, so that is the uh, qualitative data. It can also refer to texture, hard or soft, for example. Okay, texture for a material, for example. Smells, uh, uh, smell. Uh, good or not good, for example, is you just classify into that two particular uh, smells. Taste, whether it's uh, umami, uh, taste sweet or bitter or whatsoever. Appearance can be also considered as qualitative. Appearance could be, uh, uh, it could be, uh, if you can categorize the appearance, could be uh, smart or could be neat, could be clumsy, for example. Okay. Uh, for example, it can be also beauty, etc. Any qualitative, qualitative observation can be described as qualitative data. Okay, and easy to say, qualitative describe the quality. So that quality, what kind of quality, depending of what uh, observation that you are uh, using, is it colors or is it texture or etc. So that is qualitative data. Okay, means that. The variable is not in numbers. But what about quantitative data? Okay. Quantitative data deals with number. Means that whenever you see values, numbers, then it is quantitative data. Second, data which can be measured. Okay. Unlike qualitative, we cannot measure. 
quantitative we can measure. For example, length of skewers. We measure the length, right? Uh, weight of students. You can measure the weight of a student. Okay. What kind of quantitative data you might have? First, length. Second, height. Or it could be area, volume, weight, speed, time, temperature, humidity, whatsoever uh, names you can have, but represented by numbers. All that are quantitative data. Now, easy to say what is quantitative? Quantitative described by quantity, the value, okay? The value of that particular data. Okay, uh, I hope everyone is okay. Now, let us look at a uh, uh, specific example of qualitative data. Now, we may have this three distinction of qualitative data. The first is what we call nominal data. Second is ordinal data. Or sometimes uh, you may find what we call binary data. Okay. What is nominal data? Okay, if you look at your table 1.3 in your textbook on page 8, you can see this particular description in your textbook. Okay, nominal data usually cannot be ordered or ranked. Means that you have the value, you have the what, what we call the uh, quality value or quality observation, but we cannot order or we cannot rank the value, the, 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 the data. Okay. Usually, you will have two or more categories. At least, you must have two categories. But more than two, okay. Okay. What are the examples of nominal data? Okay. We may have gender, male or female. Okay. We may have city, Kanga, Jitra, Alosta, etc. We may have religion. We may have ethnicity or race. Or we may have different brands for and I uh, for uh, a gadget or smartphone, or we may have occupation. And if you see all the example and the nominal are all in terms of quality, and definitely we are not going to be able to rank them which one is the first, which one is the second, per se for each of the categorical uh, or what we call nominal data. So that is nominal data. What about ordinal data? So since we may have uh, what we call uh, a, a need to, to, to order uh, our, our data, so that is where we, we create uh, what we call another type of data that what we call ordinal data. For this particular data, we can order the data and we can rank them. So it means that when we order them, we know which one is the first, which one is the second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth, depending on the how many categories that you may have for that particular particular ranking or ordering. Okay, the same with nominal, usually we will have two or more categories involved. Okay, what are the examples of ordinal data? First, it could be education level. Uh, in our case, in Malaysia, we have the, the, the list is UKSR, followed by PMR, followed by SPM, uh, followed by certificate, followed by diploma, followed by undergraduate, followed by, uh, you know, master, and finally, your PhD. So that will be education level. So you have the order uh, from the lowest to the highest uh, order. Okay. And for the second example is the uh, the medal award. For example, if we are talking about the Olymp Olympic uh, uh, sport, okay? we have gold medal, we have silver medal, we have bronze medal. So we are going to rank this accordingly. And we may have also exam grade. Okay? We may have A, B, C, as simple as that, or we may have A plus, A minus, A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, and so on and so forth. The same goes to ranking of the university. Okay? And that's all for ordinal data. What about binary data? Okay? So, as we know, binary involves two 
values. Okay, so it can be nominal or it can be ordinal depending on data that you have in hand. And for this particular binary data, usually you will have only two categories. So when we say two categories, we look back what we have under ordinal and nominal. If there are categories under nominal or ordinal with two categories only, then it can be, you know, uh, placed under binary data. What are the examples of binary data? First, you have true and false. Second, on and off. You have one, zero, pass, fail. For example, you have gender, male, female. All these are what we call binary data. Okay. Any question in your class? No, no question? Okay. No, no, no. Thank you. Next, we move on to the quantitative data. Okay. Apart from qualitative data, where we have to represent our data, where sometimes descriptive cannot uh, complete our what we call data collection. So we may have what we call quantitative, quantitative data. And what are the example of quantitative data? So we may have two types of quantitative that is discrete and continuous. And for this particular discrete and continuous, it will be discussed further into detail in chapter two, where we have probability distribution for discrete variable and continuous variable. So what is discrete variable? Okay. So discrete variable, in, if you refer to your textbook, it is uh, still in table 1.3. So discrete variable is usually can be counted or it is countable. Okay. And it's specified for certain values. Okay. What are the example of discrete? First, number of children. One children, two children, three children. There is or there are no 1.5 children, 2.5 children, no specific, uh, no such uh, values for <clears throat> a number of children. It will be a uh, certain value, specific value. Second, daily admission in a clinic. So admission referring to number of visitors that visit a clinic. Okay, so the number of visitors specifically, <clears throat> we can count them. One visitor, two visitor, three visitor, and so on and so forth. The same goes to number of books in a library, number of accidents. All these <clears throat> reflect specific or certain values. What about continuous? Okay, unlike discrete, continuous data we cannot count. So we cannot count the uh, values for continuous uh, data. But it must be measured means that it is measurable. For example, uh, what we have in Skewers uh, example. So can be any numerical value or an interval. Means that if you have a ruler, okay, uh, a ruler you have from 0 cm or 0 inch until 15 cm, okay, so any values on that particular ruler can be considered as continuous data. What are the examples of continuous data? First, you can have length. You may have also height, area, volume, speed, time, temperature, or whatsoever for continuous data. So it means that here, every single data that you want to have for this particular data, all of them must be measured. Okay? Now, there are other examples. This is from my previous slide. Okay. For ordinal data, for nominal data, okay, you may have also zip code. Okay, your zip code, for example, 47,000, 47,100. 47, so, these are all uh, considered as nominal data. Or it could be your matrix number or ID number. Okay. Also considered as nominal data. Okay. I color also as nominal data. For ordinal data, anything that is ranked can be uh, uh, classified as ordinal data. For example, if you have rating, for example, rating best, better, good. So it, it, you 
can put it as an ordinal data because you, you we are going to uh, order them accordingly uh, from maybe from the best to least best for or maybe for least best to the best according to your preference okay the same you may have also like a skill usually we can uh, uh, what we call uh, see this particular uh, data in a survey like a skill whether you agree neutral or disagree or like a skill usually they put in terms of one until seven for example sometimes from one until ten depending on the uh, distinction that you have inside this particular uh, like a skill okay uh, for the quantitative okay uh you can have this particular example as what we have discussed just now almost the same okay now uh, okay. okay next knowing that we are dealing with data our data contain our variables, and that variable is what we call as x. Okay, if one we, if we have one variable, we have x one. If you have two variables, you have x one, x two. Okay, followed by if you have three, four, whatsoever, then you have different number of variables. Now, this particular variable that we are talking about, okay, uh, if we reflect back to our data. Okay, we can put them into two two types of data. Okay, we can have them as ungrouped, or we can have group data. So ungrouped data is what we have seen before. Actually, you have seen quite few times of example of ungrouped data. For example, as this one. This is a, a table from example one point one on page nine. So this is the the data. Uh, for the internal ring gear, okay, and uh, that particular internal ring gear will have different variable. That is the internal, uh, the length of internal uh, ring, and the external of the uh, internal ring. So both are measured in centimeter. So in this particular what we call a uh, table. So this is what we call as ungrouped data. Means that we have raw data that we have gathered from our experiment so this is what we call as ungrouped data or sometimes we call it as raw data okay sometimes you can also data in the form of frequency table okay so means that you have uh when you have frequency means that your data your x for example, in this case, this is your X1, this is your X2. Let's say we are talking about internal ring gear. So we are talking about class interval of your internal ring gear. Means that your original data from this particular raw data has been transformed into what we call class interval. When we have class interval, means that we know from the internal what we call value, if you can see what are the minimum value, if you can observe from here. So we can see the minimum is 1.08. So we begin with the class interval as the minimum value. And we are going to end up our interval, class interval, with the maximum measurement that we have from our raw data. And in this case, okay, I believe this is this table have uh, any other value so uh, the maximum value is 1.23 so what happened is that from our raw data we put them into different class interval of the internal diameter so what happened is that in this case we would like to have four different class interval so means that we divide our raw data into four classes and the first class will be from 1.08 until 1.11, followed by 1.12 until 1.15. If you can see the class interval, the, the length, the, the range of class interval will be the same 
for every class interval. Okay. So what happened is that from this raw data, we will see how many data will fall within 1.08 until 1.11. So if you uh, count, uh, uh, count, so in this case, we will have three data falls under 1.08 until 1.11. For interval class number two, 1.12 until 1.15, so you will have four data, four raw data in uh, false within these two values. The same goes to the third class and fourth class. And if you can see, okay, if you have uh, what we call 20 sample inside here, then the cumulative value for the frequency will also 20. So the n here is the same as your summation of frequency. Okay. So any question here, class? So all these are what we call theoretical part. Okay. We are going to discuss and we are going to do some example. Uh, I, I believe somewhere next week during uh, our class on uh, Wednesday, we are going to do the hands-on calculation using Excel and using uh, what we call using your calculator if possible. Okay. So now, uh, what you should understand for this particular slide, you may have ungrouped data or raw data, or you may have group data. But this group data is coming for your, from your raw data. And we know still we are talking about the same variable. We are talking about internal here, and we're still talking about internal here. But your internal variable now is in the form of different classes. Okay? I hope everyone understands. Now, what is the difference between ungrouped and group data? Okay, which one is preferable? Which one is better? Okay, which one is good? Okay, so there will be uh, uh, good and bad uh, for each of the ungrouped and group data. It depends on what is the purpose of your data presentation, if you wish to use the ungrouped or if you wish to use the group data. Let us look one by one. For ungrouped data, original data is preserved, means that data values remain in its original form. Definitely, because if you can see here, this is your raw data. We are not going to change anything about the data. We have our original data inside the table. We didn't change at all. Okay. As compared to your group data, Data is transformed into class interval and boundaries. Yes, if you can see, our new variable, I uh, know our new what we call representation of our data is now in terms of class interval and class boundary. But still, the variable is the same in the internal diameter. Now, using ungroup or raw data, it is hard to summarize the data and it is impossible to get meaningful insight. Yes, if you look at your table here, if you look at the table, all you can see are, are numbers reflecting the shape of that particular product, uh, diameter measurement, the shift, morning shift, and you have the night shift. And you also have the the information regarding the hours of data collection and the same goes to uh, uh, what we call shift for night shift, hours of the data collection. And you also have the raw data. And it is hard to see any in meaningful insight from this table. Okay, but when you have uh, group data, by constructing class interval with frequency, we can summarize and get meaningful insight using suitable analysis method, that is using graphical and numerical approach. And these are going to be discussed further later. So compared to ungroup and group, okay, it seems that this ungroup is better in terms of uh, representing the original data. But in terms of representing the meaningful insight, we are going to use more on the group data. Okay? So which data format is being used by available software for data analysis? Can you guess, class? Means that if you have your data, 
you want to use your Excel, you want to use your uh, SPSS, Minitab, SAS, S plus, R, for example, or Minitab. These, all these, uh, what we call available software are going to use the ungroup or group data. Can you guess, class? Group. Huh? Group data. Group data. Are you sure? Are you sure? Any, any other answer? Definitely, the other answer will be ungroup data lah kan? Okay. The answer is ungroup data. Because why? When you use your group data, group data will no longer be used for analysis. Except when we use Excel, okay? Yes, definitely we are going to have some process from raw data, we are going to put into group data and then from, from that group data, we are going to use, we are going to choose what kind of graphical or numerical analysis that we can choose to reflect our group data. But for analysis, I mean directly using available software, they are going to use the ungrouped data. Because uh, using the ungrouped data, more analysis can be done. Okay? Now, we are going to move into what we call data summary and presentation. Just now we are talking about the data and uh, what types of data that we may have and uh, what distinction between group and ungroup for our data. Now, uh, this uh, slide reflect the, the first class that we have last night. Okay, we talk a lot about population sample. These are the two terms that we are going to uh, use a lot in this course. Okay. Can someone tell me why we don't measure our subject from our population? Can someone tell me why we don't use our subject to uh, that we need to measure or we need to observe from our population but we use our sample? Can someone tell me why? Can someone tell me why? Huh. No one? Someone, please. Our hero for today's class. Why we choose sample but we don't choose population? Huh. Daniel? Daniel Irfan? Seems like you are turning on your microphone. Why we choose our subject? From sample, but not from our population. Um, because if we use the population, then it would take a lot of resources and time, which may not be optimal. Yeah, thank you very much, Kushen. That's correct. One reason why we don't choose our observation to be measured from is not from the population, because you will need more resources, more time more uh, what we call uh, you know money to spend when we choose our observation from population so what happened is that we are going to choose our sample that will represent the whole population that we are trying to measure and from this particular sample where we choose them according to some specific uh, what we call statistical sampling uh, procedure okay uh, so, by using specific sampling procedure, we know that our sample that we choose is representative enough for the whole population. And see, let's say we have chosen our sample, we have measured them, and we have our variable uh, recorded in our data. And, uh, and that particular variable we know as X. Now, this all the discussion that we are going to have uh, onwards are referring to our variable x. Now, there are two types of uh, statistics that you may use to, to, to help you out with the analysis with your data. Okay? Uh, we may have what we call descriptive statistics 
or we may have what we call inferential statistics. And we know that last night I do explain that descriptive statistic is very simple. It's just the way of how you want to show your data in a meaningful way. Rather than inferential statistic, it's more on the discussion of what we have just now. We are going to measure uh, something from the sample and we wish to make conclusion for our population. So that will be inferential statistic. And we are going to discuss that in chapter 2 onward. Now, what is descriptive statistic? You may have two types of descriptive statistic. It's either you use graphical form or you use you use numerical form and for graphical form there will be uh, quite few forms of graphicals that we can represent our data with and for numerical we are going to look into these three measures only that will be measure of central tendency measure of dispersion measure of position and i know for some of you this is uh, this uh, material is kind of a repetition for you because you have covered this uh, in your secondary schools or maybe in your metropolitan. But but in our case, if you see 271, uh, uh, in-depth discussion will be done in terms of these three measures. And there will be this distinction or differences between uh, why and how we can use a measure of central tendency, a, a part of dispersion or measure of position. Now, for this discussion, for summary and presentation, we begin with the graphical parts, okay? Now, uh, before we go into uh, the graphical part per se, uh, uh, we, we start with the two representation of your data, okay? You may represent your data in terms of tabular form, or you can have them in terms of charts. What is tabular form? Maybe some of you may not know, tabular form is referring to your table format of your data. So this is a tabular form of, uh, of data. And charts could be any variety, varieties of charts. Okay, we will look different types of charts to represent your data. So uh, you can see, uh, you can have different types of uh, representation of your data. How to know which one to use? Okay. So it depends on the purpose of your presentation. Sometimes you may still need your table because you need to refer to your values of your data. Sometimes you, you don't need that because I, I only need the, the summary of that. So this is where the charts came in. Okay, so it depends on the purpose of your presentation. It could be what is uh, whether tabular or chart depending on the purpose that you wish to use. Now, we know that we have two types of data, qualitative and quantitative, okay? So what kind of uh, charts that we have for these two types of data? So for qualitative data, okay, bar charts is the common one, okay? But there are different types of bar chart, okay? We have uh, the common one and the stack bar chart and the group bar chart, we'll see later. Uh, what are the difference between common, stack, and group bar chart. And the simple one is the pie chart, the, the most commonly used okay, to represent your data. The qualitative data is using pie chart. Okay? For quantitative data, so we will have more option for quantitative because uh, uh, quantitative data deals with number, number that we can measure or actual specific value. So there will be more options we may have for this particular data. So some of the options are first frequency distribution and histogram. So we, we are going to use a lot this, a lot of this particular uh, histogram for your uh, next uh, what we call discussion. We may have we may also have line chart, frequency polygon, OG, stem and leaf plot, and finally is box. Uh, box plot. I forgot to put the, the box plot. The box plot is the most common what we call uh, 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 charts used for quantitative, quantitative data because the box plot can reveal more information for your data in hand. Okay, so we'll see one by one later. 
So qualitative data, quantitative data, which chart to use, which uh, histogram to use, how to know which one to use, determine your data, is it qualitative or quantitative? So determine from your data, is it this part or is it this part? And if it is from this part, what is the purpose of using specific chart? Okay, why I use bar chart? Why not pie chart? So there will be reason why you choose different charts for your uh, data representation. The same goes to quantitative data. Now, let's move to the first qualitative uh, data and how we can use graphical form for this particular qualitative data. And this is from your uh, textbook on page uh, 10. Okay, if you can see under example 1.2, okay, so example 1.2 refers to this particular uh, data, qualitative data. So the qualitative data or the categorical is the defective and non-defective. So this is the variable that you have, okay, defective or non-defective. And you have the frequency for this particular uh, defective part and non-defective parts. So, in this particular, uh, for this particular table of qualitative data, you can have bar chart or you can have pie chart. Depends on which that you need most. For example, if you want to show your, your what we call uh, data, your qualitative data in most simple way, you can use your pie chart. Where your pie chart refers to defective item, this part, and the other one is your non-defective, sorry, this is defective item, about 1,000, and you have 300 non-defective item. Okay, so this is defect, this is non-defect. Okay, as simple as that. And the, the information revealed is regarding the proportion or the percentage of the data that you have from the frequency. And if you can see from here, how you can find 76.9. So 76.9 is 1,000 over 1,300. Okay, multiply by 1,300. So you will get 76.9% is defective, is non-defective. Okay, the biggest part here. And the, the rest is defective item, which is 23.1%. So there is a change in terms of uh, uh, what we call information that you uh, describe in your graphical parts here. As compared to bar chart, okay, somehow you may choose bar chart in terms of, because you, you need to, to, to use the original data revealed in your uh, tabular form. So you use bar chart. Okay, the difference between bar chart and histogram is that uh, th this bar uh, next to the other bar, you will have what we call uh, distance here. So that's why we call it as bar chart. And this bar chart exactly represents your data in table form. So you have defective, you have non-defective, and you have the, uh, the, the, the values for defective item and the values for non-defective item. So in this particular case, actually, you can choose to put the value here on the uh, bar. But now, uh, we don't put that. Okay? So, this particular chart shows the categorical data with its frequency or uh, what we call percentage. Compared to what we call the, the uh, others, uh, what, uh, the, the different types of charts that you may have, okay, in, in, apart from bar chart that you have just now, okay, you can summarize your data into what we call these different types of bar chart. Okay, the first bar chart is almost the same as what we have just, uh, we have, uh, just now, this one. Okay, almost the same as this one. You have the categorical here, okay, you have the, the frequency for each bar, okay. If you don't like this particular bar chart, you can choose uh, the other part, the other types of bar chart, which is stack bar chart. 
And this depends on your data that you have in hand. Sometimes data can be suitable only for bar chart. But there are times uh, data that can be used uh, for stack bar chart if your bar, your tabular has uh, more what we call information inside the tabular. So this is where you can use the bar, stack bar chart to represent your data. So in this case, you have a uh, categorical, you have machine one, you have machine two, and you have different number of outputs for each machine. And this machine refers to different week. So this is week one, week two, and week three. And that represent for machine one and machine two. So you can imagine the tabular form for this particular uh, uh, what we call data is more complex compared to this particular data. Or somehow you can use the same data using stack bar chart. You can use uh, what we call group bar chart. Okay. And almost the same information. But uh, in this case, uh, your X axis is no longer the machine. But your X axis is more on the week that you have in your uh, data. So week one, week two, week three. And you have the machine here. You have the machine, I, I believe the gray one is machine one, and this uh, almost uh, green one is the, the the machine two. Yes, machine one and machine two. And you have for the Y axis is the frequency of each of the output. Okay. Now, the purpose of choosing specific bar chart depends on the data you have. Selection of bar chart depends on the variables and information of each variable, as, I, as what I have mentioned for the stack bar and the group bar. And for the pie chart, okay, what is the difference between what you have here and what you have here is almost the same, okay? It's just that the slices represent the categorical data in your data, data set. And most of the time, you are going to use the percentage to represent the, the frequency of each of the slices, okay? So that will be uh, uh, some summaries for your data presentation for qualitative data. Okay, it's already 2.40 uh, uh, in my using my watch. Uh, I will uh, start and uh, stop here for a while. So do you have any questions so far, class, regarding the material that we have just discussed? No. No, okay. Um, I was planning to finish up until uh, the quantitative, eh? and I will just come up with a video uh, next week so that you can go specifically how each of the uh, what we call charts of the qualitative and quantitative can be made. Okay, now uh, for the quantitative data means that we are dealing with numbers, okay? Our data can be in terms of what we call here, in terms of group data, or it could be in terms of ungrouped data. It depends, okay? It depends. But usually, uh, when we will transform our data from ungrouped data into group data, then only we are going to use this particular frequency table, which contain the, the variable in terms of class interval, as well as the frequency, and it will transform from this into different types of charts. Okay, I think I'll just uh, go very quickly on the graphical for quantitative, and we'll just stop the class uh, right after we finish on, uh, the, 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 the few examples of quantitative graphical representation. Now, you can have uh, what we call if you have ungrouped data, uh, you have all the numerical values, you can use bar chart, okay? And what happened is that in your bar chart, the bar, the bar will represent the class interval of your data, okay? So there are ways on how to create this particular class interval. And I was going to use uh, uh, maybe one slide video or one video for this particular discussion on how we transform our ungrouped data into what we call class interval uh, uh, 
uh, data. Okay. So from here, you can have bar chart, you can have pie chart, you can have histogram, okay, you can have line chart, you can have frequency polygon, okay, you can have also OGIF, okay. OGIF and a frequency polygon is actually the same, okay. But if you can see, uh, frequency polygon is actually from the frequency distribution here. 22.9 is actually 2. 2.9 until 3 is actually 7. 3 until 3.05 is 9. Uh, 3.05 until 3.1 is 2. Okay. You are taking the the point of each of the bar and we put and we uh, connect them using line. So from here, you can have frequency polygon. From frequency polygon, you can have your OG, where you will need to add 2 plus 7, you will get 9 here. Next, you will have 9 here. 9 plus 9 plus 9, you will get 18. 18 plus 2, you will get 20. So what happened? Your OG will stop at 20. So 2 plus 7, you get 9. 9 plus, uh, what is number just now? So you, you add up the, the bar value so you can have this particular OG. Okay. And you can also have stem and leaf. Okay, and you can also have box plot. Okay. Uh, I think we, uh, we are going to look at stem and leaf, box plot, histogram, and the class interval in the next class. And I will prepare that in terms of video so that you can have you can have a chance on uh, watching again if you if you wish to you know refer to that particular video. So for this particular class, I think I'll just stop here. Okay, uh, I'll just stop here because uh, it's already more than one hour. So I don't want to consume to, to make the video more uh, longer because last time, last night we have 1.32, one hour and 32 minutes for the video. So I uh, quite long for me to upload the video in the YouTube. So I'll just stop here. So before we stop, do you have any, any question class? Anything to ask with regard to your project or anything regarding the what we call the discussion that we have just uh, did here? No, I hope I'm not alone in my in my in my class now. Okay. So far, no question. Okay. Now, for your next task, okay, if you look into your textbook on page uh, thirty-one, okay. Your textbook on page 31. Okay, you have your tutorial one. Okay, I want you to look at the tutorial questions. Okay, just go through the tutorial questions and have some feelings of uh, uh, of answering the question and see how you can answer the questions. Maybe from part one, part two. Okay, part two could be until. Okay, part two can be until, okay, you can actually look at each of the questions and somehow uh, the, the earlier questions will reflect the concept that we have discussed. Okay, so I want you to look at the tutorial questions, even though you have project for your chapter one, I want you to understand because this chapter will help you out in the next chapter, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. Because we are going to use the same concept in chapter 1 for the next chapter 2, 3, and 4, as well as chapter 5. Okay? So I want you to look at your uh, tutorial 1 and see uh, all the questions. And if you have any questions, we can discuss on Wednesday next week. And for for the class, uh, uh, the a synchronized class, I will prepare a video, few videos for you to look at so that you can, 
we don't have uh, the understanding for the rest of the materials in chapter one. Okay, so I'll just stop sharing. Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you next week. Okay, have a nice day, have a nice weekend. Thank, Thank you, you Doctor. Thank, Thank you, Doctor.